Hello and welcome to another The Football History Boys Tier Maker Special. Today it is the transfer window, it is open, so we are looking at the best transfers of all time. We've chosen a list of a lucky 13 to go through, and we're going to go through one by one, and our rankings today are, what a transfer at the top, then below it, the fees, uh, the fees that are justified, then the players that are essentially important to that club, then the bargains, and finally, maybe... So they're actually overrated when yeah. we go through them. Um, you are a bit of a transfer expert, I feel, <laughs> much more than me. Um, so I'm I'm going to be banking on you to okay. give me a lot of knowledge today. Where do you want to start? Well, I I, had, I enjoyed putting this list together. You know, we've had a good debate off camera about whether some should be included here, and we'll, we'll come mm. to them. That you know, the, the shirt you're wearing, Salah, maybe one of those who, who you could argue is a Liverpool fan should be there. Um, these, I think, these are incredibly sort of seismic transfers not just for the fee but also for what it led to as well so I think there's going to be some interesting ones let's start with uh, the first one we got there and we'll work our way through them Cristiano Ronaldo to Real Madrid 80 million back in 2009 yeah this was yeah. an amazing uh, transfer window they signed Kaká just before yeah. for a world record 56 million I think and then they they signed Benzema as well in the same transfer window it was a pretty good and one Ronaldo for, for 80 million um, world record he was out, you know, at this point he was out as well. He yeah. was above Messi. He had had seasons for uh, United where he'd hit heights out. None of us thought possible in the Premier League era. Yeah. Um, Messi had like, just won Champions League at this point, but it was all about Ronaldo, wasn't it? It was. And, you know, we both said we're not massive fans of this guy. We respect what he's done. He's one of the greatest goal scorers of all time, for sure. Um, you know, I think maybe the Euros proved that he's not able to. Uh, know when his time is coming to an end, I guess, in suppose in some way. Or when to uh, hand the free kick duties over to somebody else. Exactly that. <laughs> but for a world record fee, often, and we will see when we do the counter video of this, some of the worst chances of all time, but big fees don't always mean big performances. Absolutely. This is a man for a world record fee, which is obviously then beaten by Gaza Bale, the, uh, the Welshman, yeah. um, a few years later. Brilliant. This definitely is someone who certainly justified their fee. Because if you look at that record he had for Real Madrid, you know, a goal a game, effectively, through 400, 500 matches, is an incredible well, it's 450 record. 450 goals and 438 games. It's I, just th bonkers. I think this is what a transfer. I think this is a top tier. I know it's 80 million, but it's so good. Yeah, yeah. And you know, as much as I don't like putting five, him near the top... Five Champions Leagues as yeah. well. He's a man who won... Everything there is to win in he, football. He took he took Madrid to Alex level, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And and he and the Messi bits the versus each other. They exist because he moved to Real Madrid, isn't it? It gave uh, yeah. us Real Madrid, uh, Barcelona, Messi, Ronaldo. Fantastic. Right. Next up, then another one of the, another goats, um, Diego Maradona's transfer from Barcelona to Napoli. What can you tell us? So. Um, I mean, it feels like quite a sizable fee for 1984. £6.9 million. Pounds. Mm, Still quite, quite a big a fee. Then, yeah. You know, converted. Um, however, this is a guy who had done uh, decent at Barcelona. But he left in a bit of a scandal, didn't he? Yeah. Was it, um, the, the, was it the, the fight, wasn't it, in the Copa del Rey final, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, you know, an interesting, colourful guy who will go on to do even more interesting kind of things. A colourful guy. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> That's you know. the PG way of it. Yeah. yeah, really colourful fella. He goes to an incredibly colourful city, Napoli, Naples. You'd be there, in, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and when we went there, our tour guide did a big ring on the map with an X through it said, don't go there. Don't go to that bit. And that, that bit there is where Maradona actually enjoyed lots of his time. Um, yeah, it's yeah, certainly dodgy so, parts right. of Napoli. Um, but he was incredible for Napoli because what he did was help them lift a Scudetto at a time when they really hadn't had much success and, uh, at all. UEFA Cup as well. Yeah. Which was at that point a much better trophy than it is yeah, sort for of sure. now. I know I know Naples, the city, you he's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. It's Maradona everywhere. Yeah. He's like a religious figure yeah. over there, isn't it? Yeah, you go there and it's it's, it's Marek Hampshire <laughs> and Diego Maradona. Yeah, true. It's those two names. But it's, it's you know going from Barcelona and being you know one of the best players in the world to Napoli at the time probably was a bit of a, a shock or a downgrade. Some yeah, call it. yeah, he's yeah, not gone to one it. of these sort of A-lister clubs yeah. at the point. Yeah, um, but he you know put Napoli on the map. Yeah, and what, where's he going to go? I think um, he's so important to that club, Napoli, when you talk about their history. They named themselves, their stadium, when, when he passed away, the Stadio 
Amand, Diego, Diego Armando, Armando yeah. Maradona. You know, put him there then. Yeah. Okay. He, uh, let's get this clear. Just because he's there doesn't mean he's no. not as good as no, no, no. Ronaldo. But I think that is nice for him. Contextually, yeah. he was incredibly important to Napoli. These are all great chances. Spawn. Right. Vincent Company, uh, Hamburg to Man City for six million. Yeah, two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. And this, this is after. Is this? Is this the Taksin Shinawatra era, or is it after that? It is. I think it's the first signing, and I may be wrong on this. But I think it's the first signing of the new era. Okay, right. Um, or certainly just coming towards the end of the round the, the Rabinia yeah. at the time, was it? Yeah. So you know, we we had a chat about whether this one should be included. For me, he's one of the most important signings, and for Man City too, in the club's history. Man City now dominate the Premier League, and of course that's Pep Guardiola and everything, and lots of money and lots of charges that may or may not come to anything. <laughs> but at this time, they were a club that were trying to break into that the, the old, you know, top four, top five. Yeah. Um, they make it the top six. They make themselves one of the biggest club in that. Yeah. yeah. Through. This guy who was their captain, company, um, absolute leader on the pitch. Obviously, he scored always there, wasn't he? Yeah. Goals at the most important time to win them titles. He is an incredibly intelligent man. One of you know Pep's most trust, trusted lieutenants on the pitch. Going on now to to got his shot at you know Bayern Munich and did very well at Burnley. Um, he is someone who definitely will have a future probably in management as well, depending on how it goes now at Bayern. But but this is a guy I think who really defined Manchester City at that period of time. And someone who was longevity, you know, throughout that era where they signed so many players. Think of all those players they've signed, all that money they've sent, spent, and he was there. All those centre backs they've signed throughout it. He was the guy that led them. Yeah, the um, six million. Now back to thousand eight, six million for a defender was probably quite average. Yeah, I think it was necessarily a bargain at the time. But no. what would you say? I think I'd stick him. I think he's similar to the the Maradona category, and it's not it's not a diss. Okay. I think he's incredibly important to Manchester City. Incredibly important to Manchester City. Yeah, I think I think at the time six million, I don't know what it would be now adjusted, but I don't think it was like anything crazy bargain at the time, no, was it? No. Right, let's go on to uh, more of a historical one now. Alfredo Di Stefano mm. from Millonarios in Colombia, yes, to Real Madrid. But there was a bit of controversy around this. There was. Did he sign for Barca as well? Yeah. So 1953, no, 1952 is where it kicks off. Uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid. Both quite like the look of this guy, Alfredo Di Stefano. Yeah, um, pretty decent player. Fair enough, good shout, because he was very good. Um, they both put their name in the ring. Uh, they both try and sign him. And actually, the first club to get an agreement is Barcelona. He then also agrees to sign for Real Madrid too, yeah. um, at which Barcelona are fuming. Barcelona, uh, so Real Madrid agree that he'll play, sort of, I think it was two years at Barcelona, and then he would move to Real Madrid after two years. They sort of amicably try and go, well, <laughs> okay, crazy, two years it? there, two years with us. Yeah. Uh, Barcelona would go, no, nah, we're not having him. If you've yeah. signed for Bar- Real Madrid, you're not signing for us as well. So they, they effectively... This is not, not long after the Civil War, is it? It's only, what, 15, 16 yeah. years later? Incredible sort of... The clubs that stand on either side of you know, Spanish history, really, in that yeah, way. The antithesis of each other, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Still are, but certainly back then, so much more. Um, and you know, he moves for 6.8 million pesos. Um and what's that? What's that in today's money? I don't want that in today's money. <laughs> but I suggest that it was worth it yeah. because this guy was incredibly Five successful. Five European cups. Yes. Uh, a fantastic partnership with our, our boy Frank Pushkas as well later on. Incredible. He's a good player. He was a good player. There's a few chances like that back in those days. I think Kubala was similar as well. We to and you just pass. wonder how, like you know, people like Brighton now picking up young players from across the world because they've got this massive network of scouts and databases and things. Like that. This didn't exist in 1953. How on earth did you find players like this back then? But I know, yeah, fair play. And lots of it was actually on tour and things like that, wasn't it? They would go and tour and they'd go, "Hey, that guy's good." Um, what do you reckon them? Up. I think what a transfer yeah, I've for what a player. So, Madrid too well. Right, this is one that we can remember happening quite yes. vividly. Uh, Wayne Rooney's transfer from Everton to Man United back in 2004. Yep. Um, around 30 million, was it? Yeah, about 27, 28 million. How old was he here? 19, 20? He was young, young. Yeah. very young. He, yeah. Oh, 18, wasn't he? Just after the Euros, yeah. was it? Yeah. Oh, so 18 year old Wayne Rooney just tore up the Euros for England. Um, is probably the hottest property in the world at that point. Definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, there was that. There's that. There's that kid holding up a sign, wasn't there? In Old Trafford, saying, "Please sign Rooney." Yeah. And uh, you know, the story went at the time. Oh, that's why we signed him because this boy wanted him, 
and he was there, I think, at the uh, unveiling as well with the yeah. sign. Um, I mean, he, he becomes Man United's all-time goal scorer, record goal scorer. Yeah. He becomes England's all-time record goal scorer when he's there, I think. He is probably, Man United is up there as one of the greatest ever players, isn't he? Yeah, of course he is. He's one of England's greatest ever players. He's one of Man United's greatest ever players. £27 million was a heck of a lot of money to pay. I remember over the time going, that's a lot that of money about to pay for an 18-year-old. You know, it, was, it was kind of the, the, the Chelsea fees had, had maybe pushed it up as well yes, at the time. Yeah, it was when football fees started to, to pop. Um, yeah, yeah. And certainly I think there's, there's he definitely justified the fee. We could put him in that category. Maybe we put him in that what a transfer category for Man United's sake and, and look what he did in that career. Scored uh, very early on a, a hat-trick in his Champions League debut and, and all these de- different things where he became an incredible Man for that football club, uh, does he justify his fee? I'm gonna change this to more than justify. Okay, the fee. I like that. More than justify the fee. I feel like justify the fee sounds a bit bog standard. Yeah. Um, let's stick. Let's put him there. Yeah. For, for a lot of money for an 18 year old, my word, he paid it back, didn't he? Yes. Right. And Golo Kante, um, signing for Leicester. Who did yeah. he sign from? From Cannes, in France. Okay. Uh, I've got the number exactly here for you because one of those funny little ones with add-ons. He signed. For uh, so in 2015, for 5.6 million pounds, random figure. Okay. Um, now, Leicester City unheard of at the time, totally unheard. No one heard of the day. I can guarantee that it you know it would have been reported on Sky Sports because everything is, but no one had taken notice of this, no one had gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who that is. Oh, some are, some yeah. random French midfielder, you know, lots of clubs, lots signed, lots of random midfielders in the transfer window. This is one that you're not going to pick up on. Now, it just so happens this is the year that Leicester go on to win the title. And he's vitally important in that vitally defensive important. midfield role. Plays 37 out of 38 Premier League games. Um, he is sensational. To go from Esteban Cambiasso. Yeah. Didn't he? Because he was yeah. there the season before, yeah. wasn't he? Um, Leicester just about survived relegation the season before. And then they appoint Ranieri. And a lot of people go, oh, this is a gamble. This is a sort of thing dress but clubs do. You know, go for someone yeah. who's maybe past their best now. Signed a lot of random players. Someone like Riyad Mahrez, who perhaps you could have argued would be here as well. Um, mm. And they go on, obviously, with Jamie Vardy's Jamie goals, Vardy's 11 right. and 11 games and all that business um, to, to break the run, uh, the record run. Well, he is central to that because he just locks up the midfield, goes on to Chelsea, is sensational at Chelsea then. Wins the league the year after, doesn't yeah. he? Well. And wins the World Cup the year yeah. after that. And I don't think anyone's got a bad word to say about him either. And he was even really good at the Euros recently. Yeah. He was, it was excellent yeah. for that. Yeah, it was him. Pissed. He's been in... Saudi Arabia for a year and yet he was still not covering every blade of grass it's like a shame the last few years has kind of he's tailed off a bit but yeah I think he he's obviously a bargain isn't he definitely a bargain to, to sign a player that does that for your midfield and then Chelsea obviously go on to pay a lot of money and less to make money on the back of it um, he's definitely a bargain I think yeah. to be honest pretty much all of these the reason why they're in here could all be what a transfer yeah. we, have, we have to kind of separate them in some way haven't we yeah. right Eric Cantona uh, leads to Man United yep. I think just over a million pounds 1.2 million back in 92 yep. just after Leicester had won the first division Leeds. and the Premier League Le- sorry Leeds won the first division and the Premier League era starts yep. and he goes to Man United and he defines the early years of the Premier League era he is the main yeah. the main man isn't he he's a character again isn't he yeah, he's another character collar up yeah, yeah. Um, this is a fella who really, when you think about nineties football, he is one of the men of it. Yes, of nineties football, um, full of a load of quotes. Obviously, he ends up uh, kung fu kicking a supporter, uh, yeah. which is staggering to see. And he's banned for many months. And he gives that very funny press conference about the, uh, to the media and about all the attention he's getting. Uh, you know, think sort of a Balotelli, but someone who is incredibly eloquent in, with it as well. In in that way, well. Head, yeah, headlines <laughs> followed him. Um, he was someone who who was so vital for United, and then actually gives up football quite young, really, relatively speaking. He, he doesn't have the international career, does he? I think he no. fell out with whoever was in charge. Was it Julio? On it, he didn't fell out with Julio in '94. Yeah. I think did Julio blame him or something, or was it Ginola? One of them. They both fell out with him, I think. But he, yeah, he does, he does retire pretty early, doesn't he? He walks away from football. Um, he's, he's acted since he's been in adverts. He's been he's, made, the, advert, he's, he's got a music album out as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he has. A um, very, very, yeah, interesting fella. But for, for the early Premier League Man United years, he's so important, isn't he? So, so important. Yes. Um, what a character. Important to club. 
Yeah, I think he is important to the club in the way that Maradona and, and company were. Right, and I'll tell you another character, and he wore this shirt behind us. That's Paolo Di Canio. Yes. We are kindly given this shirt by 3 Retro, and they are kindly sponsoring this video today. So please get onto their website and check out their amazing range of Retro football kits. They've got clubs from all around the world, international teams as well, and they've even got a discount, a 10% discount code if you type 3 Retro 10 on any purchase. So again, 3 Retro. There we go, a little uh, nice Segway interlude into there. It. There we go. Right, Check them out. where are you going to put the next one then? Trevor Francis, the first one million pound player. There is a bit of debate, isn't there? There was yeah, an they, Italian player for two two billion lira or something. Yeah, which converted becomes that, and and also there's there's the whole thing. At the time they reported it as um, nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine to to take away the pressure oh, of right, being okay. the first million pound player. But it, it was a million pounds. I think it was one point two million in, 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 with add-ons and things like that. Um, so a lot of money to pay back in 1979, a million pounds. You know, we're talking. Had we done before, did it? Yeah, Kante <laughs> was 5.6 million in in 2015. You know, a million pounds back <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> a heck of a lot of money. Yeah. Um, signs for Nottingham Forest, and uh, in fairness to him, in his first season, goes back paying some of that transfer fee. Scores the winning goal in the European Cup final. Malmo, yeah, gets Malmo. Um, and Forest win a European Cup. They are brilliant under Clough and he was one of the main men in that side. Yeah, I, I think he's got to go in because he's just, he's a he's a very historically significant transfer that worked. Yeah, he's a linchpin really. That worked. And I think he goes into, what do you think, more than justified the fee? Because it, was, yeah, it wasn't I a bargain because it, it was loads back then. No, 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 absolutely not a bargain. I think, I think it's like the Rooney level of fee really, you know, and he paid that back, yeah. I scored the winner. Right, we'll move on to one of the most seismic transfers of all time. We actually put this in our book. Shall I go and get it now? Um, another little segue. Uh, in our book, fifth, the, um, Football's 50 Most Important Moments, we yeah. actually put David Beckham's transfer to LA Galaxy in here. And it's probably the only one that, only one that we got stick for when we first, uh, yeah. first put it out there. But we put it in there because I feel like this transfer changed football a bit. And the idea of the football celebrity yeah. and you know a player like as big as David Beckham going over to that kind of league was mental at the time he moved from Real Madrid one of the greatest clubs of all time he was a Galactico in LA Galaxy for a free transfer in yeah. 2007 he still had years in his legs you know he wasn't he wasn't done um, he goes and joins what is to all of us in Europe certainly definitely of our age and if you weren't around for the first iteration of players moving across like Pele to New York Cosmos. Yeah. Uh, for us, a total unknown. The MLS, nothing, means nothing to any of us at that time. It wasn't even being broadcast on British TV. You know, suddenly we get then Sky picking it up and things like that to show his games. I, I, yeah, seismic, I was interested in it. Seismic, seismic transfer. And why it's so important as well is because what it done is then legitimises everyone else who follows him. Because everyone else who follows him afterwards, you know, be it Gerard or Lampard, Ibrahimovic, be it Ibrahimovic or Giovinco, all these random, yeah, Irish eyes are smiling. Robbie Keane, welcome to Hollywood. I remember the line; it was, it was amazing. It was well, amazing. And, and then you get then you get the sort of Hollywood impact in, you know, Ryan Reynolds and Rob yeah. McEnany coming over for Wrexham. Yeah, and you got to got to imagine that you know the Beckham transfer and the idea of you know football in America, the MLS, probably had some kind of impact. Definitely, even if they don't realise it. You yeah. know, you know, we, we're not saying that this started soccer in America it, of course it didn't there was the 1994 World Cup for one thing but what this did in sort of European eyes was turn eyes towards America and say this is somewhere where you, you can go and play and what is so significant about this is part of this transfer deal he was obviously a very stupid businessman the Beckham camp um, is that he is able to invest part of his contract is he will one day allow to and I can't remember the figure but not very much millions of pounds be able to buy a, a, an MLS team that's part of the deal. Oh, and he has that. Part of that deal is the Inter Miami mm. team that he has set up in, in 2020. And then Messi. Um, where that is now Messi, Suarez, Busquets, Busquets Alba. Jordi Alba, and, and are very successful. And they are, you know, all eyes to them. I, I've got an Inter Miami shirt, you know, and I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, and it's the collaborations there are huge now. He is the catalyst for that because his transfer allowed him to buy into a club. I mean, that club now, into Miami, are worth, they already reckon around about a billion pounds, something like that, and he didn't pay anywhere near a billion pounds. For Incredible them. investment. Yeah. yeah I, and also, you know, importantly, attendances, I think, pretty much doubled 
when he when he came. Yeah. And it was a league that was you know struggling to get supporters really. And he joined, and the intense thing was yeah. massive, and that's yeah. obviously a big boost to the league. Um, it's just a it's a historic transfer because it just it shows yes. the power of a single player. Yeah person yeah. to change a whole league whole country particularly someone with the name of Beckham but is it these are the best transfers now are we limiting this to the stuff on the pitch okay or off the pitch okay because most of these we said about that they've we've all ranked them basically so far on what they did on the pitch yes because if you do it off the pitch as well then Canton probably wouldn't be as high because of oh, Maradona because they're scandals but I don't know. Does this go overrated in terms of best transfers? Well, we either. It's two options. It's either what a transfer. <laughs> what a transfer because he changed football. Or it's overrated because he, he didn't actually do a huge amount there. He, he, he won he some left, stuff. He went off on loan, didn't he? Um, times, yeah. Right? He did do what he wanted. He didn't spend a huge amount of time. You know, All his time wasn't dedicated to America. Obviously, their seasons run differently and things like that. Let's put... You go. Important to the club. But it could be important to the league in that way. Slash league. Slash league. There you go. Good get out. Sorry, right. Good get out. Michel Platini uh, from San Etienne to... Is that right? From San Etienne yeah, to, to Juve. 1982. 129,000 euros converted. So now this is money. a bit of time after Trevor Francis as well. It's gone for a million. Mm. And he's ten, basically 10, 10, 10%, 10 of, of it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, quickly wins three Ballon d'Ors in a, in a row. Yeah. And a Euro in 84. Yeah. Becomes the best player in the world. He's pretty good at San Etienne as well. Um, go on. We talked about him a couple of times, haven't we? We've talked about him in the fact that he perhaps wasn't the best <laughs> man to run UEFA, but we've talked about him in, in French draft when we when we looked at you know our best French players of all time. Mm-hmm. We've talked about him in in some of the best Ballon d'Or players of all time. Mm-hmm. And every time we bring him up, we talk about maybe he is a little bit. Um, under the radar, certainly to a British audience, he was an incredible footballer. I remember yeah. Lineker talking about how much he respected Platini and, and what a good player he was. Well, we put a picture on, of Platini on our Twitter and we say, how good is he? And we get an overwhelming response. People yeah. who saw him play saying that he was just absolutely yeah. out of this world. Yeah. Three so what, Ballon d'Ors. You is, know. What a transfer? Yeah, I think it's what a transfer. And, and from that time... Five and, feet as well. Um, you know, a guy who really is 80s football in many ways, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. King Kenny got a Liverpool one in there. Um, Kenny Dalglish transfer from Celtic to Liverpool. How much? Four hundred forty thousand pounds. In nineteen seventy seven. It's probably quite a lot back then, wasn't mm. it? Um, mm. Now Liverpool had just lost their talismanic forward Kevin Keegan, who would then go on to uh, win the Ballon d'Or for ha- with Hamburg two two years in a row. Yeah. Um, they signed Kenny Dalglish in, in his place. He's obviously a vital figure for Celtic before that. Um, and obviously, what he does for that club, uh, insane. He he obviously wins, uh, I think, three European Cups for Liverpool, multiple leagues, yeah, uh, league cups, um, and then of course he comes to manager, then wins more things, was a double, yeah, uh, wins the league again a couple of times, FA Cup again, uh, an amazing figure. Yeah, absolutely. He is um, someone who's just so associated with Liverpool Football Club now, isn't he? Obviously, songs about him and and and. As a manager, is incredibly important to the history of Liverpool football. Sir club. Kenny Dalglish now as well. Yeah, and, and you know, absolutely rightly deserved um, after the aftermath of Hillsborough and everything. But as a player, he was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if you ever get the chance to go to Anfield, you see you know, the, the Liverpool Museum and various yeah. parts of the stadium dedicated to him and, and everything that he did for the football club. Partnership with Ian Rush. Yeah, was uh, pretty insane. Yeah, and you know, King Kenny. Um, really is someone in, in in Liverpool who is a, is an adopted scouser, really, isn't he? He's not. He's a Scottish yeah, man, yeah. but he's an adopted scouser, and I think really, certainly, at least, has got to be important to the club. He, he's important to the club, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Brilliant. Right. Um, Thierry Henry's transfer from Juventus, where he didn't have a good time. Nope. After we left Monaco, um, to Arsenal back in ninety nine. Yeah, ninety nine for eleven million pounds. Okay, so pounds. decent figure about them. Reasonable, yeah. Um, it's quite a bit. I think, obviously, Arsene Wenger, Arsenal manager at the time, French, obviously knows a lot about him. Yeah. Um, had he managed him at Monaco? I think he might have. Yeah, I think he had. I think yeah. that's where he was aware of him, yeah. Because he, he often played out wide, didn't he? Yeah. And he'd obviously won the World Cup of France, but he hadn't been, obviously, the main figure back then. Um, had he become, you know, probably the Premier League's best ever player? 
certainly up there, isn't he? He's got to be in conversation. Um, you know, neither of us are Arsenal fans, but we both respect the heck out of Thierry Henry. Yes. Um, and he is an iconic image of our growing up watching the Premier League, two mm-hmm. thousands football, definitely. Um, and and definitely for me, that favourite kit of all time, and that lovely maroon last year of Highbury kit, him yeah. scoring many goals in the last year of Highbury. Um, and then obviously he returns to Arsenal a little bit later in his career, but he is an Arsenal legend. But beyond that, he's a Premier League legend, and and he his his just his goals were sensational. Arsenal were the only challenger for many many years to Man United. Yeah, and it was through him. And he's an invincible. He is an invincible. And then he he and he was consistently excellent every single yeah. year. Oh Never yeah, had like an off yeah. year, did he? Like yeah, a lot of people. He wasn't good that season, but he was just yeah insane. Yeah. Um, I think what a transfer this is. Do you think so? I think so. I, it's a lot of money back then, you know, well, 11 million. Well, he, he became the Premier League's best of a player. But I think he, so, yeah. And he wasn't thought of as highly when he signed because he didn't work out at Juventus for yeah. whatever reason. And that 14 shirt, iconic for him, isn't it? As, oh, maybe maybe yeah. you think Javi Alonso, but certainly... Well, Johan Cruyff, I was going to there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But there's the number 14. Uh, yeah, just, you just see it, isn't it? Well, well, moving on. Um, okay, R9, well, Ronaldo. Um... This is our 13th one. Cruzario to PSV back in 1994. Um, he just won the World Cup with Brazil but didn't play a game. Yeah. He was an unheard of uh, teenager at the time. I think he was 18 when he moved. For just over 5 million euros, that must be about, I don't know, 4, four million quid yeah. or something. Um, and he was, it was uh, Romario who had played PSV before, recommended the club to sign him. He said, oh, this, this young Brazilian yeah. player, I know he played play in the squad of me, he's ridiculous, you should sign him. So they do take a gamble on him. He had just scored 34 and 34 <laughs> in his first season, I think, for Cruzeiro. And then he moves over to PSV and two seasons there, rips up the league. Um, I think he might even win away for Cup or something this time. But he scores, I think... 45, 46? In like 50 games. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really... Uh, that, that Back in those days... Those kind of figures, you yeah. didn't really see it much, did yeah. you? It was kind of like, what? A, a goal a game? That's crazy. If a striker had a goal every other game, it was re- you, they were regarded as prolific. Yeah. Like Michael Owen never got more than 20 goals, ni- never got more than 19 goals in the league season. Wow. But we all you know, say, oh, Michael Owen's yeah. prolific. He's the best striker in the world at the time. But these figures were outrageous. And he, Ronaldo generally changed football in terms of his ability, the fact that he was quick and powerful, but he's also an amazing dribbler yeah he was also a fantastic finisher he could in the air he had everything you wanted in a footballer and I think this transfer for such a bargain fee definitely a bargain I yeah. think is the you know changed football in the 90s yeah and obviously he goes on to have a, a fantastic career for Brazil and a fantastic career in Europe injury riddled career sadly yeah. you know he could have gone on and done so much more which he's saying something because he was incredible um but yeah, when you look at it, really, just just over five million pounds, five and a half million, not bad at all for someone who would go on and be such a great, and then make a lot of money from him when they sell him as well. Absolutely right. That is our final list of our four best transfers of all time: our Cristiano Ronaldo to um, Real Madrid, Di Stefano to Real Madrid, Platini to Juventus, and Henri to Arsenal. Nice. Um, and then with the red, the others are just below it. But you guys can uh, have a go at this yourself by following the link in the description below. Please let us know in the comments which ones you think we got wrong, which ones we got right. What would you put at the very top? What do you think of maybe overrated out of these transfers? Maybe Dave Beckham should be in there overrated, <laughs> but who knows? Are you happy with the list? I think so, yeah. I think we, we've given a good little uh, you know history of those there. It's, it's not just about necessarily everything they did. It's about the importance of them as well. It is. Right. We'll be back next week as well for the worst transfers <laughs> of all time. Which should be a fun one. Um, so please uh, subscribe if you can to get a hold of that one. And uh, if there's anything else, check out Three Retro. Yeah, follow those links in the description below to get hold of 10% off your favourite retro kits. And we'll see you again for the next one very soon.